we rough the outside profile with a two inch shell mill using ceramic inserts. This time we're really going to make some fireworks in this Inconel 718 when we rough the pockets using a half inch diameter ceramic end mill. video I'm going to show you exactly how I made this tool path with Mastercam so stay tuned. Mastercam not only allows us to rough these pockets with a 5-axis tool path following the curved floor, it also lets us do it using a dynamic strategy. One of my favorite things about a dynamic strategy is the fact that it always keeps the radial engagement the same throughout the entire operation. It doesn't matter if you're machining a wide open space or in a tight corner of the pocket, it will never take a larger step over than what you tell it. So no matter what you're doing, you know you're getting a consistent tool path from start to finish. That's going to be very important using this ceramic end mill. The last thing we need is for this tool to take a heavy cut because it's going to load up and break the end mill. Now let me show you how I made this tool path. So we're going to go to tool paths, multi-axis tool paths, and go to pocketing. Select our end mill, type in our surface footage and feed per tooth. Go to cut pattern, select our machining geometries. We want to double click all the pockets and that's going to select all the geometry inside of the pockets. Now we're going to select our floor geometry. So that's the floor of all the pockets. End selection. Now we're going to tell it we're going to leave 10,000 stock on the walls and 10,000 stock on the floors. We're going to increase our cut tolerance to 1,000 because this is just roughing. And our desired step over, we're going to put 20 thousandths. Make sure that we have dynamic set for our strategy and offset from floor. And we're going to take one slice, so this is only going to put one tool path on. So now we want to go into our linking tab. Make sure that this entry feed distance is above the part. So we're going to put in 100 thou. We're going to go to our roughing tab. We're going to use a helical ramp down to the bottom of the tool path. So our ramp angle, we're going to use a one degree ramp. For our helix diameter, we're going to do 85% of the tool. Spindle speed, we're going to say 15 to 80. Entry feed rate, we're going to use 60 inches a minute. We're going to go into our utility tab and make sure that this is checked. We don't want to run any rapid moves in this tool path, so we're going to put a large number here for a fast feed move. Everything looks good here. In our planes, we're going to make sure that all three of these say top. For our coolant, we're going to cut our coolant off since we're using ceramics, and we're going to use our through spindle air blast. Everything else is good, so we're going to hit OK. And there's our tool paths and that we're helical milling down to the bottom of the pocket. So you can notice that it's following the curved floor. We turn our model and our curves off, following that curved floor, and we're helical milling down to the bottom of the pocket. Turn these model back on. So if we run a back plot on this, you can see in the corners that this tool path stays normal to the floor or perpendicular to the floor. So now all we're gonna have left is this little material from the end mill to the tapered wall. And we're gonna get rid of that in the next video using a Swarth tool path. 
thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a comment below. Also, check out our online store for great deals on tools that help support free education. We'll catch you on the next one.